World War I was the turning point, when tanks became the war horses of the 20th century. And even though this tank is made of aluminum and plastic, and the horse is a puppet, we comprehend what a terrible turning point it was. The tanks, they simply rolled over people and they rolled through wire and they obliterated horses. And it was that clash then of, uh, of flesh and metal, uh, of the machine and humankind, really. Michael Morpurgo's novel, War Horse, has been turned into this. The National Theatre of Great Britain's most successful production ever. Get ready to jump the wire! Holy remembered! It opens this week at New York's Lincoln Center. War Horse is the story of Joey, an English farm horse, and Albert, the boy who loves him. Joey is sold to the British Army to be sent to the battlefront. The great adventure promised on enlistment posters soon became the horror of real war for men and horses. These creatures had extraordinary courage to go on, as the men did, through the most appalling conditions and to charge on when they were being shot at. They, of course, didn't have the comprehension of what was happening that we had, but nonetheless, the terror was quite clear to them. Their plight was total innocence. They were simply being used and sacrificed. The numbers are staggering. 10 million soldiers died in World War I, and it's believed about the same number of horses. The story of War Horse is actually two stories. Only the truth that in life we have spoken. One about horses, the other about the extraordinary puppets that seem like living, breathing, feeling creatures on the stage. They were created by South Africans Adrian Kohler and Basil Jones, partners in life and for the last 30 years in Handspring Puppet Company. That's Jones on the left, Kohler on the right, with the hyena they considered the prototype for their horses. He's a collection of pulleys and strings and little levers, like bicycle gears. But building larger-than-life horses was another order of magnitude. The original Joey took four months to build in Handspring Studio in South Africa. And that's the up-and-down movement. The design suggests the skeleton and muscles of a real horse, but the materials actually were chosen to make each puppet lightweight. The magic occurs when these men, called the head, the hind, and the heart of the horse, take over, and he becomes Joey. For us, breath is the fundamental of all movement in puppetry. Um, if the puppet is breathing, the puppet is alive. And it's by breathing that the puppeteers signal each other what to do. The shiver of the skin, the, the flick of the ear, all has meaning. The, the trick of the puppet is, is to allow the audience to say, OK, well, this is a real horse. They're making that meaning, and it's that activity that I think, that empathy that's coming out of the audience that really uh, is what moves them. I'm volunteering. In War Horse, the boy, Albert, lies about his age and enlists so that he can search for Joey. He endures the nightmare of combat, surviving on his belief that one day they will be reunited. Fading away like the stars in the morning. The truth of World War I can be seen on the memorials, the long, long lists of names. A whole generation of young men gone. But they were remembered and mourned. But what about the horses? In London, at least, there's a monument. It is inscribed with these words. They had no choice. Oh.